Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to edit a nighttime portrait using Adobe Lightroom. We shot this around Christmas time, this is my friend Kishi in the photo, and we shot this at Winter Wonderland which is like a fairground sort of place in Hyde Park in London. We shot this using a Canon 600D with a Sigma 50mm 1.4 lens. We shot it at f1.4 to get the most light and we used ISO 400 and the shutter speed was 1 80th of a second. So the first thing I want to do is crop this image in because it's a little bit off center for me. I like my portraits to be a little bit more centered. So I'm going to crop that in like that. Quick tip is that if you're trying to crop portraits for Instagram, Instagram actually uploads portraits at four by five aspect ratio. So, or is that aspect ratio? Yeah. So this is the format that Instagram up uploads their portraits in. So if you want to crop your picture before you send it to Instagram, that's just a quick tip for you, 4x5 or 8x10. But we're just going to keep it at the standard aspect ratio of 2x3, and we're just going to crop it in slightly. So the first thing I want to do, as you can see, the picture is really underexposed, so I want to add some more exposure to the image. I'm going to go into the exposure, and because we shot this raw, which is really important for night portraits, if you shoot in raw, you have a lot more control over the lighting and control over the exposure, the highlights, the shadows and everything. So I'm going to go to the exposure and I'm going to put it up slightly. We're going to go put it up to, I'd say about 0 0.8 should be fine. I don't want to push it too much because you'll start to see some grain come out of the image, which I really don't want. Some like noisy elements. So 0 0.8 should be fine. The next bit, which is my favorite bit and probably the most important part of the image is the tone curve. So you want to make sure it's set to RGB so it controls all of the colors. If you're unfamiliar with the tone curve, you have the highlights up this end, midpoints in the middle, and shadows at the bottom. And what this does is you can just really control of it, control the image and really play with the highlights and the shadows. So the first thing I want to do is make a point around here in the shadow section. And then I'm going to take the base point and bring it up slightly and what that does is it sort of crushes the blacks so that they are not as dark and a little bit washed out i just like that effect in my image um obviously it's up to you but i feel like it gives it quite a nice cool effect then i'm going to take the point we just made and bring that up slightly as well now this is the big point and what this is going to do is completely change the way our image looks it's going to really brighten it up so we're going to make a point around here, just below the middle, and then we're just going to bring that up there. As you can see, our skin's really come out now, um, and so the highlights and the lights in the background have really come out, and just making the picture pop a lot. So that's really cool. I like that. That looks good. So a quick before and after of that. As you can see, with the exposure and the tone curve, we've already made such a huge difference to the image. If you want to see the tone curve effect on itself, by itself, you can see it just there. So I think that looks really cool. The next thing I want to do on the tone curve is go down to channel and go to blue. And I just want to add a little bit of blue into the highlights and the shadows, because for this picture, I want it to have like a blue, purpley, pink tone. So I'm going to add some blue to the highlights just up here and a little bit to the shadows as well. So that looks good to me. Next, because her skin is very orange, and I do, as I said, I want it to have sort of a bluey tone to the image. I'm going to go up to the white balance and fix that. So I'm going to bring it down slightly to about 4,400. And so it's at 4,464, which is good for me. And as you can see, it's just sort of brought down the orangey, yellowy tones and just made it a little bit more cool, which is what I was looking for. So after the white balance, I want to go down to clarity. And I just want to put that up, and this is going to make the image pop even more. It's just going to sort of bring it out of the screen a little bit. On the edges, as you can see, it's sort of bringing it up. I'm going to put it about 17, which is I think is good. And then vibrancy, as I said, I want the colors to come out, so I'm going to put the vibrancy up as well to about 23. So that should be fine. So that's looking really nice so far. You can see before and after. If you want to know how to do before and after, it's actually the backslash key. So you just tap that. So that's after and that's before. So we've made a huge difference and we're almost done actually. Um, we just want to go down. Split toning is the next part. And usually for my split toning, you can control the colors 
of the highlights and the shadows. So that's what it does. So usually I like to go for yellowy highlights and bluey shadows. I just feel like it gives a nice tone to the image while still looking quite natural. So for highlights, I usually want to go around 51, sort of 50, 51. And then on the saturation of it, we don't want it too saturated because it will just make our skin look really yellowy orange. So I'm going to bring it down to about 11, 12. About 12 should be fine. And then in the shadows, we want to add a blue. So I want to go around 230 on the hue. And then as you can see, it's really blue now. But because we already added some blue to the tone curve, we don't need to add so much here. So I'd say about, bring the saturation down to about 7 or 8. About 8 should be fine. So that looks really nice. And then I want to add a slight vignette to this image just to bring more attention to her face. Um, so I'll go down to post crop vignetting in the effects panel and I'm going to bring that down to about minus 25. Minus 25, yeah that should be fine. And you can just see, if we turn that off, you can see the effect it had. So it just brings more attention to her face I feel and darkens the edge slightly. And we're going to add a little bit of grain because I like to add a little bit of grain to my pictures. Um, it's just something I always do, around 20 should be fine. I don't want to push it too much because the picture already will have some noise from the fact that we shot it at night and we've boosted up the exposure. So it will have some noise, as if you zoom in here, that it is a little bit noisy. Um, so we're going to actually use noise reduction to just bring that down slightly. Not too much because the picture will start to look soft and sort of weird, but add a little bit of noise reduction just to bring that down. The only other thing I'll do I think is bring the shadows up a little bit more slightly so we just go back to tone curve and we're just going to bring that up slightly because it's a little bit too dark for my liking and honestly I think that's good so we can see the bef before and the after and it's just got a really cool effect. The only other thing I'll do with this is obviously put it into, re into Photoshop to retouch the skin and I'd also sort of add some more highlight to the bits that are highlighted already. You can do this in Lightroom, um, but I like to do it in Photoshop when I'm retouching, and I'll probably have a tutorial on that soon. But that's basically it, as you can see, before and after. We've really brightened up the image. One more thing that I would do is bring the highlights down, and all that does is add some more sort of depth to the lights in the back. They were overexposed and blown out, but we're just sort of bringing that back slightly. So I'd say about minus 55 should be good for that. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you learned how to do it. This is my friend Kishi in the photo. Feel free to follow both of us on Instagram. We shoot all the time so you can catch up with what we're doing. And thank you for watching the video.